Hi everybody, this is Clinton Ryder at the Best Buy blog. I have a review today of the iRig Pro Quattro IO audio interface. A very versatile piece of equipment that I've discovered that uh, will help you with audio mixing for live situations, for mobile and field recording, for podcasting, as well as for streaming. I will take a look at the product, its various uses, show you some of its features, and give you my opinion on how these features are effective or perhaps where they could use some improvement and you can decide for yourself. If you like the video, please like and subscribe to the Best Buy channel for more reviews of all kinds of different products available on the Best Buy website. To show you the unit outside the box, <laughs> here it is right here. It's very small, you can see it fits in my hand. Pro Quattro is the latest addition to IK Multimedia's audio interface family. IK Multimedia has aimed to create a very versatile interface that allows you to tackle a many different situations, which to me makes sense in today's world where we need versatility. You can mix your live audio, do podcasting with ease, you can make live streams, and it has some interesting features to support you in all of those activities. I'll begin by showing you a close-up of the Pro Quattro, give you an idea of what the basic features are. There are many. If you look closely at the unit, you see there are many buttons on the front. And as you take a tour, you can see there are lots of other features on every side of the unit. They make maximum use of the space. All in a unit that, as you can see, fits into my hand. It's got the profile of a larger a smartphone, but it is thicker, of course. Somewhere between a smartphone and a small paperback novel. I'll begin with the uh, channel inputs. We have input one and two on the top of the unit. Inputs three and four are here. And those are linked to four preamp dials on the front. So you can adjust your levels, which you will see on the LED meters, which are conveniently located on the top here. You have channel one, two, three, four. Also on the LED meter, you have a left and right output, so you can see how your signal is overall. And a smart feature they've added is a battery meter, because when you are doing mobile and field recording, you may be operating the unit off of four AA batteries, which you can replace easily in the back. As you plug in your microphones, you make adjustments to your levels and then begin recording. There are other options to mix audio beyond the use of a microphone, which is here. We have lines three and four, left, right input. So you can add an external audio source, a simpler version of that with a small headphone input. So if you are, say, taking an audio from an older iPhone or any other device that has a headphone jack output, you can simply input there and you can add audio to your productions via channels three and four. For your microphones, you will also find 48 volt phantom power when you're using a condenser microphone, which is very common for capturing uh, room sound or environmental noise when you're making documentaries, perhaps, or recording music. You need that 48 volt power to help the microphones. And there's switches here. They're, they're both linked. There's two switches, one for channels one and two, the other one for channel three and four. And then on the other side is our, our outputs. Over here, we have two XLR outputs, left and right. You can run a cable to a powered speaker, which then turns the iRig Pro Quattro into a mixer. Channels one, two, three, four, go into left to right outputs into your speakers and you're doing a gig all of a sudden. So think about that. Mixer is very small. Four channels, it's limited in that scope, but for small gigs, it might be just perfect. You'll also have a headphone output and just a stereo output and there are MIDI, mini, mini, mini MIDI <laughs> input and outputs for recording MIDI devices. And although I do not have a, a mini MIDI device at this moment, you would maybe plug a drum trigger or something like that. If you were podcasting, sometimes when you're, you're having fun with during the podcast, you might hit a trigger for a background noise sound that would play uh, in response to a joke or even just a sound cue you hit the button and then it would play through the interface that way. And then a secondary use is to use the iRig Pro Quattro for podcasting. This is where we have some really interesting features available. 
First of all, I'll come back to the line in, which uh, allows you to put external sources. So if you have sound effects, your intro music, things like this, you can put it onto line three and four and cue as needed. Second of all, IK Multimedia has included a limiter function. And that's really great for when you're recording voices, such as myself right now. And when you talk loud or you laugh or you speak with a very sharp tone, things like this, the limiter will engage and stop the peaks from the sound. So your volume is much more regulated, which is really important. A limiter is, is, a, is a necessary feature in radio style broadcasting of which podcast is part of that. Turn it on and you have much more control over the vocal volumes and dynamic changes giving a much more professional sound. If you do use the limiter, you have to be very careful about what you do with the levels here. Make sure that they're set well to begin with because once the limiter starts working, it can push back against the volume if you are very loud to begin with. So then you would hear the effect of the limiter making your voice go quiet when you don't want it to be quiet. Take the time to set your level straight, turn on the limiter, do your podcast, you're in good shape. Another great use for the iRig Pro Quattro is for streaming. And that's where another feature comes in very handy. It's the loopback button right here. When you turn on the loopback button, whichever external device you're using, which could be your computer, iPhone, your iPad, Android device, all of these are supported by the iRig Pro Quattro. As you're doing your streaming or your broadcasting, you turn on the loopback device and that allows you to play media over your video through your computer. When I mentioned the podcasting option, I said you could input audio here. And that's just a direct input. When you have loopback turned on, and you have an, a USB cable connected, then you will play audio through your device, and it will feed into the interface to enhance your productions from that angle. There is a nice simple option for field recording as well on board microphone right here, turn it on. And you get a just a quick recording, I feel like it's similar to having your voice memo on your phone open, just a quick voice recording, an ambient recording of what's around them. The microphone is nice. It's handy in a pinch when you need to make a recording. It's not the highest quality that you would expect from having microphones that are plugged into the interface itself. There are three modes, multi, stereo, and mono. And that's also very interesting depending on the type of project. If you use the multi mode, each of the four channels are separate and will be inputted into your audio processing software, your, your DAW, individually, which means you can manipulate them. This is great for music recording, especially for music recording, where you might have a guitar, a bass, a voice, things that you really do want to keep separate while you work. However, if you're doing more of a narration when you're doing your work, you might choose the stereo option, which will condense everything into two channels, channels one and two, and then, which I think is a great idea, it backs it up. So channel one and two would send a stereo signal to your DAW, channel three and four would send the same stereo signal to your DAW on a different channel with, a, I believe it's a minus 12 decibel volume adjustment. And that's really cool because it's your safety, it's your backup. So if you happen to record too loud or someone yelled during the podcast or the, the broadcast and it was just too much for the interface to, to, to handle and you have a distortion or something like that, the minus 12 backup might be a handy fallback when you do your post-production. Then you have this a similar option with the mono button where it takes all of the channels and condenses them into one channel and then still makes a backup channel for you to use in the same fashion as the stereo mode. So I think that's a really probably overlooked, but really smart feature. You have a backup in case you didn't get your levels right or the situation was not quite what you expected when you're doing the work. All the cables are included in this unit, a uh, USB lightning, USB, USB-C, mini to MIDI connector. And as I briefly mentioned earlier, it is powered by four AA batteries. There is also this clip right here, which will allow you to attach to a tripod or anything like that to have just support the unit while you plug everything into it. When you start plugging a lot of cables into it, it starts to get busy. There's a lot, as you see, there's a lot of inputs here. 
So if you plug in two microphones here, two microphones here, then your output's here, it's got a lot of cables hanging off of it. And I'm curious, as the usage gets more and more intense, if how we're going to balance that, support it. it uh, IK Multimedia shows a lot of different situations on their, in their press releases that show us using it on a mic stand to support it or on a tripod while you're podcasting. The power sources, USB if you're connected to your computer. You will not be able to use the USB power if you're connected to an iPad or an iPhone or Android device. They're just not powerful enough to provide what's needed for the unit. Four AA batteries are a secondary option. And there's a battery meter to help you know when you're running out of power. And then there is a nine volt DC adapter, which is not included. And IK Multimedia says you should buy theirs. So the options are, in my mind, a little bit limited. Battery power, I'm not really sure how long the batteries are gonna last. The nine volt adapter seems like the most solid choice. Of course, you're in the field and maybe you're not gonna have electricity available. So the battery becomes the most important thing. My opinion on the iRig Pro Quattro IO is that IK Multimedia has come up with something that is trying to do everything at once and they come really close to, to giving us exactly what we need in the way that we need it. Again, I find that it's very busy and if you start using all the options, you're going to find that the unit is quite loaded with cables, but I love its versatility. The fact that you can do a gig one day, come home and make a YouTube video the next day, Go out in the field, get solid recordings from multiple sources if needed, that you can jump on a live stream and control the audio and sound effects and music and everything with ease. They've done a great job to put it all together. If there's one thing that that bugs me, <laughs> it's the power source. Just that are the batteries going to be stable or, or powerful enough as you're out in the field? As you may know, IK Multimedia is a company that offers lots of different products for media and music production. They're able to offer apps to support your work as well. You will find key codes for the Amplitube SE, T-Rack SE. The Amplitube is a guitar, sim a guitar amp simulator. The SE version is the mid-range version, so you actually have a lot of options without having to spend any money at all. If you're using iPhone, iPad, the Amplitube version is the CS version, which is the first tier version. The T-Rack is a, is a sound effects rack, which you, you would use to process your vocals. You might add a reverb, a delay, you might add more compression or limiting to your vocal source as you're producing your podcast or streaming. They also give you access to two other IK multimedia products. So there's a big list and it could be virtual drums to symphony strings to there's all kinds of different things that you can look for you shop. My suggestion is you think about what your needs are. I'm a musician, so I immediately thought, great, I'll, I'll use the uh, the music apps. And then I thought, well, geez, if you're making a podcast or you're streaming, maybe you don't want the music apps. You want to have the things that make your vocals sound great. Overall, you're getting a great deal of this package. I really like it. Great sounding equipment. You have the limiter. You have the loopback function. You have all the inputs you'd ever need. And you can use this in a variety of situations. To me, for a four channel mixer, you can't go wrong. You can buy the IKEA Multimedia iRig Pro Quattro IO audio interface on the Best Buy website. Click on the link below where you'll also find a link to my blog article. If you like the video, like and subscribe for more reviews on all sorts of products at the Best Buy website and on the Best Buy YouTube channel. Thanks everyone. Have a good day. Uh -huh.